Above and beyond my 30 years with the department goes to the legacy that I represent in this museum and that goes to my father. So let me take a moment and kind of explain that. All my family other than me comes from the Hard Rock Mines of Colorado. My father grew up and graduated uh, from the small town of Cripple Creek, Colorado, where he ultimately went to the University of Colorado for only a semester and a half, and I'll come back to that. He left school, ultimately married my mom, started a uh, family, but was uh, trying to eke out a life actually doing uranium mining on the western slopes of Colorado in the, in the 19, uh, 1950s. So hard life trying to provide for a family at that time. So what he saw was an advertisement to come to work at the Nevada test site. And so in 1958, he moved the family out and went to work as a mining superintendent in the tunnels of the Nevada test site. He did that for about three years, and then because of his hard work, his kind of leadership skills, and as a miner, you know how to do a couple different things. You know how to use uh, ground control. You also know how to use explosives. He was, he was hired by Livermore National Laboratory to do a number of things, and before you know it, without any college degree, he was assembling nuclear weapons. One of the last things you do is you mate nuclear material and explosives. So he did that for eight years, then was hired by the Atomic Energy Commission, the predecessor to today's Department of Energy. Worked his way up the ranks, managed a number of sites, ultimately retired in the late 1980s, working uh, for President Reagan, managing the nation's nuclear weapons program. So he had over 70,000 employees, and he had a 13 to $15 billion budget. Uh, he would always say how amazed he was that he was surrounded by these folks with PhDs, often dual PhDs, brilliant folks, yet he had no college education. He felt a little bit uncomfortable about it, so he was always driven with a passion about education. And finally, uh, the other thing he was interested in is making sure that those stories that went on at the Nevada test site, his over, over almost 40 years working in the complex, those stories get maintained. So he and a number of others in the late 1990s came up with an idea for a museum. And less than, uh, less than five years later, we have the National Atomic Testing Museum, which opened in 2005.